<laughs> well, uh, no, I don't think I can. But it's, I can say this, that uh, if you, 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 it's like saying, well, what is matter? It's stuff, you know, it's stuff there. Hold it in your hand. It's a book of sand. It's matter. Okay, that's, so all matter has really two properties, at least I'm, I'm talking now in 2017, maybe in 2100 we'll get some other ideas, but I think for the next few years, and at least for the last 300 years, matter has two properties, and only two properties, mass and charge. And those two properties, if you say this is a grain of sand, it has so much mass and it has so much charge, uh, there are a set of rules called Newtonian mechanics, which will say, oh, how much is the mass? Oh, we write that down. I and mean, they can tell you if you push on it this, mar this hard, it'll go that fast. And we can also say, well, how much charge does it have? How many coulombs of charge? A coulomb of charge is sort of like saying um, a gallon of water. So, but it, that grain of sand is charged. It may have, the answer may be zero because it doesn't have any charge. But if it's got a couple of electrons pasted on it, it's highly negatively charged. So uh, electricity is the movement and the study of the forces on stuff that is grains of sand, if you will, that are, that are charged, that have uh, added to them either a positive charge, which would be a positive ion, or a negative charge, like an electron. And if they are actually two sort of, what should I say, regimes in, in electricity, one is the static, one is the dynamic. If those charges are just sitting there, they have a uh, force on each other. In other words, if you take a positive charge and a negative charge, they attract each other. The next question I know you're going to ask is why and how, and nobody knows, but they do. And they do it in such a way that we are able to say exactly how fast they're going to do. So we can't cut, tell you what exactly the mechanism is. How It's called force at a distance. And everybody's always worried, well, how do you explain force at a distance? You can't really. Except to say, well, there's an electric field between those two things. And that's a force per unit charge that will tell you how much force is going to pull them together. Or if they're alike, push them apart. Uh, if the other regime of electricity is dynamic. That is to say, if charges move, the definition of, a, of an electric current is, it's like water in a pipe. How many gallons per minute are in the pipe? Instead of using gallons per minute, we use coulombs of charge per second. And the, that uh, one coulomb per second through a wire past an obser observation point, we call that one ampere. So one ampere of current uh, is one coulomb per second flowing in a wire. And if you, how do you get it, how do you get that to happen? How do you get that charge to move through there? Well, you put a voltage at one end, connect a battery to it, and with a positive terminal and a negative terminal to the other end of the wire, and uh, the electron will, will move. One of the stories I think is most interesting is that having said all that, you think of this charge moving in the, in the wire like water droplet in a pipe, and it goes downhill from, from a high voltage, like a high pressure. You take a straw and fill it full of water and go, and you blow the water out that way. Well, if you put the plus charge on this end of the wire, then the, something is gonna go that way and fall out the other end of the wire. Yeah, except Ben Franklin or Faraday or somebody, or the O of Art, or I'm not sure who it was, Ampere himself maybe, uh, knew that something was moving, something was flowing inside the wire, but you can't see inside a wire. And you certainly can't see an electron. And the question was, okay, which way is it going? I know I put this end of the, the bell jar or whatever it was that he has, it was his battery here. I know that something's going to happen if I put a, they didn't have light bulbs in those days, but if I put a light bulb on that end, it would light. But I didn't know, they, he could say, I didn't know whether there was stuff was going down this way through the light bulb and back this way, or was it going out this way, up through the light bulb and back into this way. They didn't know which direction. Somebody, and I've heard that it was Ben Franklin, said, what the hell, it's going that way. 
Just make a choice. You know it's got to go one way or the other. Go on that way. Ben guessed wrong. The thing that's doing the moving in the wire is the electrons. Positive ions don't move in wires. They can't. The only thing that can move in a wire is an electron. And the electron is negative. And so if you connect a positive charge to this end of the wire, and there's an electron in here, he's going to go, because he's negative, but positive charge, he's attracted up that way. Whereas Ben Franklin thought, we put a positive charge, you know, like you blow in this end of the straw, stuff is going to go that way. Well, he was wrong. So, but it's a, we, we, we've come to grips with it. Most students know that it's, re, yeah, no, it's really going the other way. But we talk about current in the, in the Ben Franklin direction, the wrong, <laughs> wrong direction, unfortunately. We know that there are currents flowing from the sun to the earth, the sun to uh, several of the planets. Uh, we know that there are Birkeland fields, the Birkeland currents, that is the way currents do flow. There's no wires up there in space, but they hang together, these flows of current, of charge, moving charge. They connect stars. And so when you, you, you can see, the people, several people in our group have shown pictures of these Birkeland currents Looks like a string, looks like a spider web. And at various points along these, especially where they bend, bingo, there's gonna be a star. So I, th I think it's almost proven that stars do form on Birkeland currents and they, and they form wherever there's a disturbance in the current. With, in other words, if the flow is going along nicely, it's okay. But if you crimp it, okay, then it says, no, no, when there's, there's a heat goes up and the compression starts. Astronomers like to think that, or they like to say, that stars and all sorts of other uh, 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 galaxies, the word I'm trying to think of, even, are formed by uh, accretion disks. There's a disk of matter, it's rotating around. Why is it rotating? Don't ask, we don't know. Well, I'll tell you why it's rotating, because Birkeland currents tend to, to twist like this. The only, the only way you can get twists in space, in, in, in astronomical objects, is if they were formed by Birkeland currents. Uh, the, some of these guys will say, well, two, uh, two things came together and one was going one way and one was going the other way, and then they crashed together. Why did they crash together? Well, because gravity attracts. Well, but that everything doesn't, if that was true, if that's the only force in the, in the, in the, war, in the cosmos, everything's gonna come crashing together and bing, the universe is gone. So they can't be. And so there's a, a reason for our feeling so strongly, um, my, I certainly obviously do, uh, that astronomers had better start coming clear with, coming clean with people and stop saying things that are wrong. That is a very good question. I, I, I suspect, I don't think they're, con men, although sometimes they sound like it. Uh, but I think it's, it's uh, inertia that uh, for years, well, let's put it this way, the, uh, the electron was proposed as a, as a body. They, it was discovered essentially by, I think it was J.J. Thompson in about 1898, something like that. And before that, people had no concept of what was an electron, what was a proton, what was an, an atom. It was just stuff out there. People knew about water flow and they knew about thermodynamics and they knew how to build structures, bridges and things like that. So engineering was on what we would call, I guess, the real stuff, everything except electricity because electricity was unknown prior to, let's say the turn of the century, 1900. And so they never studied it. And astronomers have a, a very easy job in one way and a very hard job in another. They're trying to tell you, us, what happened far, far away and long, long ago. Well, as we all know, that's the way any fairy tale begins. Far, far away and long, long ago, there was a beautiful princess and a prince and a snake and, you know. You can propose anything. You can say, well, the little green men came and turned the chair over in the backyard and during the night. If you, if you can't, well, we can't see little green men. We can't smell them. We can't touch them. But it, it was one that did it. Well, how are you going to disprove that? So that's a, sort of a, an unscientific 
way to do it. But they, they didn't use electricity. They essentially avoided it like, like the plague. And so not studying it, and of course electrical engineering started with Birkeland and Hannes Alfin and all the rest of our heroes. And look what we've made. I mean, these lights are electric. I mean, imagine if there was no electricity, we'd be sitting here talking with candle lights and there would certainly be no camera. Astronomers have, because they thought they could get away with ignoring electrical processes and came up, came up with a bunch of um, hypothetical answers for how things work, that when other people came along and suggested that there, these, these uh, causations, these mechanisms that they wanted to explain were really better explained by electrical phenomenon, they rejected it because they never had studied it. I mean, in my 39 years of teaching, I don't think I had any graduate uh, students from the physics department at all. Now, when I studied from my PhD, my head of department said, Scott, you've been teaching this, elect this electromagnetism for a long time, but have you ever had a physics course? I said, no, well, I've had the basic undergraduate physics. But said, no, 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 he says, I want you to go take an EM course from the physics department. And so I did. I think that physics up until fairly recently, and some parts of physics, which would, I would call astrophysics and uh, astronomy, uh, have never really come around to the realization that they're, they're trying to live in a world with one arm tied behind their back. If you ignore the, the major fraction of mankind's knowledge, which is electrical, and say, essentially, they don't say it about this explicitly, but if they imply that they're, as far as they're concerned, it's, it's not important and it, we have no use for it, yes, they do. And it's about time they come to the realization that they do and they will make progress if they do.